Hey guys, no video for the buying a house in Japan playlist. This is stage two of the old pickled room project. So if you haven't seen stage one of the old pickle room project, check that out first. We'll put a link in the description of this video. Also, it's on the buying a house in Japan playlist. If you watch that first, this one will make more sense. So that's what the old pickle room looked like when we were using it to store materials. Please note the mud walls. And that's what it looked like after the end of stage one. So see how rough those mud walls are? In the main house we have mud walls like this too, but they've been rendered with a really nice smooth render at the end, which gives them a really nice finish. These ones haven't. They've just been thrown together roughly, obviously, because it was going to be used as a storeroom. So that's highly relevant to our project because it means that Nothing's quite flat or straight. <laughs> the actual uprights, the studs, the upright studs are actually pretty straight and square, but the mud walls themselves are all over the place. So the unskilled labourer there is removing those sticky nest things that are all over the walls, and it took hours. They were all up along the cornice, and the only way to get them off was with a scraper and with fingers and eventually a pair of pliers to slowly pull it off. And it took hours, it took many hours. Also some other preparation too, removing some random nails and just scraping off a bit of the mud here and there that was sticking out a bit from the stud. We wanted the studs to be the highest point of the wall. So within, within reason, there's not much you can do other than remove all the mud, which we don't really want to do. So those of you who have missed the previous videos, those mud walls are reinforced with bamboo that's tied together and then the mud's packed on both sides of the bamboo, packed around the bamboo. So most of the work was the preparation of the wall and then cutting up the wood because every, just about every sheet that you see nailed to the wall had to be modified because nothing was quite square and nothing quite lined up with the, with the crooked mud wall. So this was most of the work was in here, measuring and cutting and taking it back and cutting a bit more off. And the old man had a rasp in amongst all these tools and we've been using the rasp to take little corners and edges and things off but as always with these jobs usually you guys get shown the sort of the most interesting bits but most of the work is usually preparation and the preparation is huge so in this case it was a couple of days before we actually got to nail a piece of wood to the wall so this is the beginning of nailing uh, wood to the wall which is quite quite an exciting moment yay so again, see where it butts up against the windowsill there? So it had to be cut to fit. And then we've got two sheets that'll go up pretty much straight without being modified. And then the other ones all have to be modified. <laughs> so, so that one's just straight. Bang, bang, bang. That was a bit of fun. So the plan is the vertical joins where the sheets join vertically, we're making sure that, they, that they're flush against each other because it, nothing's quite square, which means that if you have one dimension is square, that the other ones won't be. So, so our thinking is, and you'll see later why, that the vertical joints are the most important. So that's why the old guy's being really careful to line up the vertical joints to make sure they sit flush. And then at the tops and the bottoms, you'll see gaps, doesn't matter for reasons you'll see later. So obviously the only strength holding these sheets up is the studs themselves that you can nail into the mud, but you have to be lucky. If you happen to hit a piece of bamboo in there and it happened to hit it in the right way, the nail might go into the bamboo. But other than that, you're nailing into mud. It doesn't really do anything. So that's why the studs are really important. We've got to make sure the joins are at where there's a stud, which means we've got to sort of cut lengthways to make the sheets fit the studs. Oh, interesting too. 91 centimetres is an average, is, is one of the old Japanese measurements. And so these pieces apply a 91 by 182. So the 91 centimetres is a standard old Japanese measurement, which is interesting because that's between the middle of the studs as well. So I can't remember what it's called in Japanese, but that is a measurement. 91 centimetres in, in old Japanese measurements was a, a standard measurement. So that's convenient. But you can see the top of that one, even the corner had to be taken off that. So there's always something. You've got to cut a bit off here or file a bit off there. So they're vertically, they sit nice together. At the top there you can see a gap. 
But we've got to put something across there anyway. There's no way those things are going to just sit there like that. Quite often behind the ply, there's a little space between the ply and the mud. So there's no real way without covering the walls with some sort of silicon first, which would just be huge and hugely expensive. You're not going to make it sit. And even then, some places it bulges a bit. So you're not going to make it perfect. And keeping in mind, this is only going to be used for kids to play or a music room or storeroom or something like that. So it's, it's not special. And it is an old house. So it's hard with these jobs. You always want to try and do a really good job, of course. But you've got to keep perspective on it. It's still a really old house that's probably going to get demolished. Now, we did say 10 years ago when we started renovating this place that the renovations were supposed to only last for 10 years because we'd only be here for 10 years. Turns out, <laughs> turns out everybody in the family really likes this place, so we want to stay here for another 10 years. But fortunately, most of the work that we did 10 years ago has held up pretty well. Someone asked about that recently and said, how's, the, how's those renovations you did 10 years ago, how they've held up pretty well? Pretty well. Inside's pretty much the way it was 10 years ago. Outside, the south wall, of course, gets more sun. So the south wall, uh, the paint has started to fade a bit. And some of you would have seen recently, we did a, did a south wall on one of the buildings recently because it was starting to look dodgy. There's another video coming up too. We've got to do another south wall on the main house because that's starting to fade. And the, we're particularly worried about the, the wood on there. So we'll get to it got to finish this job first this job's huge which is why we're making three videos for this because it's just huge you know and some people probably would sit and watch a 45 minute video of this but some wouldn't so that's why broken this going to break this into three parts because it's huge as this as always with jobs like this as we're doing it you start to notice other things so we've got to do something with the door we've got to do something with the windows there's fly screens on the windows too that are really useful in summer because, you know, the bug thing is crazy. So got to do something with that. So there's lots of little jobs. There's flooring has to be done. Notice the ceiling's a bit not quite right. So I've got to do something with the ceiling. So <laughs> these jobs always get out of hand. And the estimates for the cost too. It was like, oh, do we really want to do this? Oh, maybe not too bad. Just some ply and some bits and pieces. And then you start doing it and you find yourself going back to the home center again and again. And, <laughs> oh no, gets, it starts to get out of hand. But we're hoping that this room will be useful at different times for different things. Because there's times of the year, like at the moment with the rainy season, it's just raining all the time. It stops raining for a while, everything's wet. Oh, have a look at this. Steamy. Have a listen. You can hear dire straits. <laughs> dire straits and cicadas. It's actually the cicadas, it's the semi I wanted you to hear. Oh, they've just stopped. You know it's hot. You know it's hot when the cicadas start. They usually don't go anything under 30 degrees. But the funny thing is, they all stop at once. They all stop at once, and then they all get going again. Me. You hear them starting up? Summer's noisy. Winter's quiet, summer's noisy. All right, back to work. Enough of that. You'll probably be able to hear the cicadas in the background of this narration, guys, because they're, they're roaring. So you yeah, rainy season, the last few weeks, just about every day it rains. We get these flash storms. We showed you the one from the water park the other day. They're really common. So hot, really hot, 33, 34 degrees. About 70% humidity at least, really steamy. So it's a pretty sweaty job. It's all right, though. Just you just got to accept the sweat and the dirt and just accept it. <laughs> just get into it, get into it, enjoy it. Nail gun, guys. First time we've actually used a nail gun, the unskilled nail gunner. <laughs> 
what a what an excellent tool it is. Those of you who haven't used a nail gun before, you've got to keep the setting has to be right. That's only four mil ply, so if you set it too deep, it'll go right through the ply. If you set it too shallow, the head will stick out. <laughs> it's a bit of a balancing thing, and the material you're hammering, you're hitting into changes too. Of course, sometimes it's wood, sometimes it's mud, so it needs a bit of setting changes. That's another thing we don't show you real often. There's a lot of thinking and measuring and considering and... The rain continues. Weeks and weeks of it this time of year. All right, so here's the... We put a cornice across the top, or a strip across the top, at the top of the ply to hold it in place. And then another one across here, like a cover strip, where the two pieces of ply join vertically. The thinking is, we glue the back of those cover strips, and then nail them all the way across, including where the, the studs are, where the uprights are thinking that that should support the ply and keep it reasonably flat and stop it from bowing and bending and whatever else it might do. So it's basically one across the top that's going into a pretty good surface and then cover strip that goes across that goes into wood now and again, which sort of keeps it pretty straight with the glue on the back of it too. So glued on the back, bang, bang, bang. And then we'll put another one across the bottom, like a, what do you call that, a uh, one across the bottom, skirting board. And the thinking is that all this wood and the cornice too, the corner, down in the corner, that as well as sort of the occasional nail is finding a good home, a good, good hard surface to go into, and the glue, and then the whole thing should sort of support itself, because it's all sort of pushing against itself, these long bits. So it seems to be working pretty well. Some places better than others. And down the bottom here, none of it quite is quite right, and we'll be able to fill it with with sort of filler. But this one was ridiculous. Look at the the bow in that, where it curves in. It really curves in there, right? And that's that's no good. You can't fill that. So what can we do? So, okay, how about we bore some holes behind where the, skirt, the skirting board's going to be and pack foam in there behind it that'll push, push it out from the wall and then put the skirting board on with glue and nails, bang, 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 that foam there, push it into the holes, push it out from the wall and then nail it in. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. It just brought it out just far enough that when the skirting board went onto it, boom, 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 it made it nice and flat. And of course, the skirting board, we can nail downwards into the floor as well. So that, that holds it in place. So that result was pretty good, nice and flat. So you've got to compromise jobs like this, you know. The old, you're working with old, old places. Pretty good. These these buildings were well made, as we've mentioned lots of times before. The, the buildings were really well made, no doubt about it. And most of the measurements were consistent and most of the corners and things, but not perfect. So again, here's a bit of a before and after. This is what I like when we started. See, the wood's all perfect. The wood's all square and straight and good. It's just the mud in between. It was never supposed to be perfect, you know, and that's what it looks like today. So still got a little bit more 
trimming to do and then filling and then preparation and then the windows and the doors and the ceiling and the floor. <laughs> yeah, that'll be stage three. Hope you enjoyed that. More videos coming soon.